A few days after Dthang's latest track, Kflop would go live on IG once again spinning the 800 YG's block. They gonna come through with it. There we did. Hey, what's up? They don't wanna come out. They know what I'll do. Bro, they bitch, I'm trying to spin. Look how comfortable I am on this block. Don't look cool in there. The basketball players. They so it's about to get lit. <laughs> they grab their basketball and start leaving. <laughs> Immediately after that clip of K-Flock spinning the op block begun to circulate, Rajis himself would then go on live saying that he is outside waiting for K-Flock to pull up. Somebody tag K-Flock, somebody tag K-Flock. It's not, play him, come right back. It's outside right now as we speak. You coming through hard and all live, block off your lives from the see your shit. Like, what's up? Pop out, we outside here. Yo, K-Flock, pop out, pop out right now, right now as we speak. You wanna make shows, you wanna make shows too. Pop out. Weirdo, huh? Water my mother. Tell Pop out right now. Rap, Pop out right now. Come up here. Where you at? Like, where you at? Like, you at? Nice, you wear I'm shit. I wish I had a suit. I mean, know the V. I'm we, on y'all. We, we see that. We know the V. We, we, yo. It is pussy. Mm. I know that was done by the Ray too. They, they see me the other day. They see me the other day. They see me the other day. You wanna go live on my block? Just know you on my block. Not worry about you. I'm not nobody live, nothing that I'm getting hot on my Respectfully, block, I see you, I see you, I said. Come do something. Say, you are, come do something. I'm gonna blow his fucking You a little kid, you are. Sadly from here, the consequences of this war would get very deadly, but not for K-Flock. Only a day after K-Flock and Ra Ra would go back and forth on social media, on the 7th of July at 11.35pm, a 19-year-old rapper associated with the YGs, known as Ty Swish, real name Tyquil Doherty, was passing through the lobby of his apartment block on Prospect Ave near East 182nd Street in Belmont. Here he was confronted by an assailant who shot him in the eye. He attempted to flee, but his injuries were too much and he would collapse outside of his own building. A situation made even more tragic by the fact that he was found unconscious on the ground by his own mother. Ty was rushed to hospital, but would sadly lose his life. 19-year-old Ty Quill Dougherty was killed in this shooting. He was shot in the head and lived in this apartment building. He seemed to be walking in the doorway when he was shot in the head and killed. A retaliatory attack would take place only four days later, with the target shockingly being a 13-year-old boy by the name of Jarian Elliott, known on the streets as J-Rip or J-Rip K. He was a young affiliate of the Cribs from Sevside, and according to the police, he was at the scene of Ty Swish's murder days before, as well as having recently been seen on live with other guests. Gang members. At around 3.15 p.m. on July the 11th, 2021, a black sedan pulled up to 743 East 187th Street near Prospect Avenue with a gunman hopping out the back seat and opening fire on two boys standing on the street. With CCTV surveillance footage capturing a man firing across the street in broad daylight. One of the targets of the shooting managed to flee, however Jay Rip was struck once in the chest and once in the ankle. He would attempt to find safety crawling into the nearby Angel's Cafe as panicked customers crowded around and tried to save his life. With the entire ordeal being being caught on video and broadcast on the news, but once again is too shocking to show you on YouTube. He would sadly lose his life en route to the hospital, being pronounced dead on arrival, with this situation being made all the more tragic by the fact that he would lose his life only weeks before his 14th birthday. Police marked multiple shell casings inside and outside Angel's Cafe as they gathered evidence throughout the evening. Surveillance video from across the street captured some of that chaos as an ambulance brought the young victim to the hospital where he would be pronounced dead and was identified as 13-year-old Jarion Elliott. Outside his building tonight, candles glow in the shape of his initials, J.E. Following his death, the news circulated an image supposedly showing Jay Rip holding a handgun. The news would report that despite being the young age of 13, he was already a member of the Rolling 80s Crips, with the New York Post reporting that he had already been arrested eight times despite only being 13. They would point out that he was specifically the intended target of the attack. And I've just got to say, it's truly shocking to think that anybody would get out of bed in the morning and go and hunt down a 13-year-old with a pistol. Jay Rip was apparently a close friend of K-Flock, with K later posting throwback clips of them apparently play fighting. Don't you supposed to be my man? Nah, why you talking like that on Facebook, bro? I ain't bound without no, putting your timeline. What? And without putting your timeline, say, yo, happy oh, New Year, what? big bro. bro. YGs like D-Thang would later go on to say that they're smoking J-Rip in songs and on social media. But even worse than that was Shah G's, who apparently went to the site of this killing, completely destroying Jay's mural and recording the whole thing for social media. 
An unnamed 16-year-old was later taken into custody for this crime, with it being rumoured to be a young YG's member by the name of Dolo G's. He had apparently been accompanied on this hit by Raji's himself, but it would take the cops around a month to pick up Dolo for his involvement in the shooting. But unfortunately for Raji's, the police wouldn't be able to catch up with him before his enemies could. It was said openly in the news that Raji's was a member of the YG's and apparently present at the killing of Jay Rip, and if the police knew this, then the ops certainly did too. And apparently, less than 10 hours after the killing of Jay Rip, on July the 11th, 2021, a 16-year-old Raji's, real name Ramon Gil Madrano, was on the way to a recording studio. At around 11.35 p.m., he found himself sat in the back of a cab at East 187th Street and Valentine Avenue in Mount Hope. And it was here, sat in the back of a cab, when he is ambushed by two young men on scooters who open fire into the car, shooting him in the head and chest, leaving him dead instantly. But to make things even more shocking, the cab driver's CCTV passenger camera was on at the time of the hit, capturing Raji's assassination in full HD with audio. A truly shocking clip, which once again is far too violent to show you here. Overnight, a boy murdered in the back of a taxi in the Bronx. Police say two suspects riding on a scooter opened fire on the cab, killing the 16-year-old in front of the driver who was not hurt. Raji's lost his life at the hands of two teenagers with guns on scooters. But what's crazy, that this was just a year and a couple of days on from when Raji's had been shot in the back after once again being caught by teenagers on scooters. And this is less than a day after he had allegedly played a part in taking the life of a 13-year-old boy. In less than a week, three youngsters involved in this feud would lose their lives to violence. For me, it's honestly hard to believe that anyone between the ages of 13 or 19 have any idea or appreciation of the dangerous lifestyle that they've been born into at this point. Even despite some of the bad things that the youngsters involved in this story and who were targeted in these killings had allegedly done, I honestly just have the utmost sympathy for them all because they never really had the proper guidance or choice to avoid such a terrible outcome at such a young age. No matter what they've done, they or their families just don't deserve to go through this and it's very hard to place the blame on a 13-year-old who's been sucked and groomed into the gang lifestyle for what happened to him. From here, surviving members like D-Thang would mourn the loss of his friend Rajiz, with other members making long posts on social media mourning the loss too. Meanwhile, the ops like K-Flock, who had just been beefing with Rajiz only days before his killing, would brag that they're smoking on Ra-Ra, with others tagging K-Flock's music specifically to taunt and mock Rajiz and the YGs. Others would point out the fact that Rajiz had apparently said on social media that he'd been smoking on Jay Rip after his death, with some suggesting that now Rajis would get the opportunity to meet Jay Rip. Moolah G's would later rap in a leaked track called Shake It with a fire beat, sampling Akon's Bonanza, referencing Rajis being left dead in the car. Bori 300 would rap on the same song that Ra Ra caught a headshot, with Dougie B going on to say that people can talk on Jay Rip, but look what happened to Ra Ra, suggesting that they're smoking him like the weed strain Zaza. Anywho, these back-to-back -back slayings were massive news in the Bronx community. The New York Post pointed out that the Bronx shooting rates had doubled between 2020 and the same period in 2021, with there apparently having been at least 380 shooting victims in the year up to that point. They reported saying that these kids were antagonizing each other on social media and then carrying out revenge shootings in real life, with a police source saying that they simply can't keep these young kids in jail, citing an apparently soft catch and release policy for juveniles, suggesting that youngsters that aren't of age yet are the perfect recruits to carry out older gang members' bidding. And it's details like this that genuinely just increase my personal sympathy for the young teenagers that are losing their lives as part of this war. Because they really are often just being groomed into the gang lifestyle by older criminals from their neighborhood at a young age when they really don't know any better. It's truly unfair that some of these communities in the poorer areas of the Bronx have young people growing up with a complete lack of positive role models, and as a result, through no fault of their own, they're being groomed and pressured into a violent gang lifestyle that they might not fully appreciate until it's too late. Fortunately, music is providing a route for some of these young men to build legitimate careers and get out of the cycle of violence once and for all. And so, in the month that followed the bloody summer in the Bronx in 2021, it would appear that K-Flop would cash in massive off of the back of the anthems that he was creating about living this dangerous lifestyle, landing him the opportunity of a lifetime that sadly, he seemingly would go on to squander.